Before we start this special edition of Road Trippin', we want to tell you about our great partners at Oakley. Trust the best in the eyewear business with your summer fit this year. Oakley is not only the best looking eyewear on the market, but also the highest quality. Get over to oakley.com to snag a pair today. That's oakley.com. I feel like we just did a, uh, a podcast before the podcast. <laughs> yeah, what were you saying, Channing, about something about skeeting? Oh, I went uh, skeet shooting the other day. It's amazing, but my arms are too long for the shotgun. That's crazy. See, hey, hey, the police got us. Come on out the bushes. Look, that's Welcome crazy. into this edition of Road Trippin' with RJ and Channing. I'm your host, Allie Clifton. Would you have expected it to start any other way? No. We want to welcome no. in our guest, though. Get right to it. He's been with us for the last hour because he lives by the motto, if you're on time, you're late. He was here before I was, which was before the recorded time. Uh, Trey Murphy, thanks so much yeah. for uh, spending Thank all you. this time with Appreciate us. Appreciate that. Oh. <laughs> nobody, likes shit to do. Nobody, nobody likes to kiss ass, Trey. He working nobody on dunks, trying to, trying to beat his nemesis, Mac McClung. How about you do a dunk contest with me? <laughs> How do you no, think no. that would go, Trey, if he did a dunk contest with you? What, what? No. No, Allie. <laughs> no. No. I, think we, I think we all know how that would go. Listen, three-point shooting contest, still barbecue chicken. You may get me in dunking. You're not I, getting know, me I think Trey's a better shooter than you, Channing. I think Trey's a better shooter than you. Let's Thank you for being it. realistic, RJ. Appreciate that, yeah. sir. Like, okay, well, he can do more than just time. catch and shoot. So, like, we ain't talking about up. others. We're talking about one thing, Richard. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> I, if if there's a good burger at the burger shack, you ain't worried about the fries. Y'all been eating in and out for years, and their fries are trash. So we ain't not talking yeah, nah. about nothing but the main thing. And nah, in and out is trash. Basketball. Yeah, in and out is trash. In-N-Out? Sure. Dude, in and out is is not the best. They don't even have bacon, bro. What do you say? Are you telling me you complain about yeah, that swine? Yeah, if no, it ain't pork, don't, don't put it on my fork. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, if in and- <laughs> Trey, if in and out is trash, then what's your go-to? Burger spot. Um, you seem probably like a five guys. You seem like a lazy ass what a burger type dude. Hey, Richard, what a burger in San like Antonio that. hit different. What at five at three a.m. Maybe it might be good, but other, if it's not three a.m., Whataburger's not good. Ooh, no. Hey, tr- Trey, Trey, you are you are in semi intelligent. We just asked what Thank your you. go-to fucking burger was. We just asked a he simple. Said five I said guys. It. I, he I, said I said it. it, but your your connection isn't isn't doing too hot right now. So I, I'm sure. You- <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's dive in. Trey, what are you up to? Uh, you're not in New Orleans right now, but we have plenty to talk about when it comes to New Orleans as well. But what's going on? How are you? How's your off season? It's going really well. I'm in Miami right now working out with, you know, my trainers and, you know, these Pelican staff coming in and coming in and out of Miami, just, you know, working on different stuff, checking in on me. Biggest focus for me has just been gaining weight and getting strong, you know, NBA is full of grown men and, you know, I'm just trying to be, you know, a part of that uh, mold of grown men that are able to you know, hold, their, hold their own and be strong. And, you know, it takes a lot. This is a long season and, you know, building that strength is very important. For, for the common listener, right, the common fan, you're an NBA player. I would say you're above average NBA player. Don't, I will <laughs> not repeat that ever again. What... <laughs> In a summer, realistically, how many things do you think you can work on or add to your game that you're actually going to use next year? Be realistic. Because a lot of these dudes do the summertime workouts and they hit it, pat, 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 pat. You see them in the game and they dribble handoff and they never dribble the basketball. So, like, what, what are you not? Don't tell me what you're working on. Like, how many things can you actually think that you can translate to the NBA game in one summer? It's not a lot, if I'm being completely honest. Like, for me, I think it's a little different because I'm able to do almost everything on the court. And so I'm able to add a little bit more to my game than probably other people probably are able to. Like, you know, you told me not to. All right. Um, 
I don't know where he's going. Again, don't tell people what you're working on. Don't give them the scout. But basically, I at the end of the day, well, ultimately, <laughs> I am working on uh, like two, two, two or three things. <laughs> keep it together, Trey. Keep it together, Trey. Yeah. Keep it together. Yeah, keep it together. I'm trying. He's, he's, yeah, he's, yeah, I'm trying. <laughs> Yeah, he'll ask you a question. He'll ask you a question and then start like counting cards. He'll start like like talking Rushing about his watches like you saw yeah, earlier. Yeah, he'll start he'll start picking his nails with scissors and shit. Like no, no, no. we're past that. We're past that. <laughs> it's like it was loud. Care. They bumping country music, man. Listen. Um, oh, I did care. Sorry, it was loud. I wanted to hear you. I'm I'm very attentive <laughs> to your wonderful story. Oh, sure you are. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so wait, there are two or three things that you're working on. <laughs> Yeah. You said that you were trying to add to your game. Yeah. Yeah. What are you and, adding to your game, bro? What are you, like, yeah. What are you on, adding? Bro. Don't listen to Channing say, get, don't give up the scouting report. He was just saying that because he was, he didn't hear what you said. That's why. I mean, I normally don't agree with Channing, but he has a point this time. So <laughs> <laughs> now you're like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. Listen, you're not going to be like, yo, I'm working on going left crossover. Boy, them motherfuckers going to sit on that left hand. You can be like, well, there goes the summer. We'll see you next summer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, you could just say handle, like handles. Yeah. Or, Overall, uh, movement, movement shooting. Play. Right, exactly. Movement shooting, getting to that second level, you know, mid-range shot. And really, those are the those are the two things, just being playing out of pick and roll as well, you know, getting more reps out of that. Get to the fucking post. I hear you, Richard. That's a little no, 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 no. I say, I say, no, no, no. I, I say this more from, I, I say this more from like a height advantage thing, not necessarily like a bully ball type thing. Like even Kevin Durant goes into the post. It doesn't matter. You got smaller guys that go into the post. You at six nine wing, you're gonna get guarded by the six two Marcus is smart, Marcus Smart. You're gonna get guarded by those six four guys. It's about like getting to that spot at like sixteen and just turning and elevating. They can't, like, you know, maybe one dribble, a little turnaround, left, right. I just say that, like, yeah, pick and rolls is a key part of the game. But, like, he's you're a 6'9 guy out there in that guard world trying to, okay, I'm going to work pick and rolls, and you got these elite, elite defensive ball handlers, Drew, our guys that, like, are defending that. I'm just saying, like, one of the things, if I were to watch, as I've watched your, your game a ton, not, like, post bang down people, but, like, cut to the 17, face up, Jab, elevate over top of them. That is unguardable for a six nine wing. Kevin Durant, all these dudes have been making livings off of it. You know, that's part of the mid range work that I, you know, get into the one dribble pull ups, the uh, turns and like control phase away. You know, I got you. I don't. Don't worry. I'm yeah, and if you need help gaining it. weight, I can't tell you everything. Master gaining weight. Listen, if, if if you need help gaining weight, getting strong, like Channing has mastered that grown man. I saw some pictures of that. I saw some pictures of that. Be- Channing, I saw some pictures of that belly in France, bud. Oh, dog. It's, it's plain weight. Plain weight? <laughs> yeah. Not plain. Plain weight. <laughs> now, bro, yeah, plain. bro, yeah, you, yeah. Look, you look seven months pregnant bloated. Nah, I don't know about all that. And say, so, you know what? You can't be body seven. shaming with Trey on here. Listen, you know, that's. And where's HR? You can't be body shaming. Why not? Hey. Everybody's a work in progress, Richard. When you grow hair, I'll slim down. <laughs> There's a better chance of me growing hair than you slimming down. Listen, stop it. I was on the pillow. I think they're both. Day. I think they're both. Trey, I do have a... <laughs> <laughs> no way, Ash. Sorry, Trey, I do ahead. have a question. Sorry, Allie. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I do have you. a Sorry. question. No, my God, you are just fine. Um, I do have a question for you, though. Without giving away, I understand. I respect what you're saying there. Um, but when you talk about getting stronger, right, and yet here you are, you're coming off a of shooting above 40% from three, the agility work, what's that balance for you? And, and then you obviously have someone like Rich who's giving kind of that get in the post mentality. Like, isn't that a fine line of not wanting to play too heavy, if you will? So my biggest thing this summer has been gradually, you know, gaining weight. I haven't been trying to gain weight all at one time. So a part of that is what I eat. Like I'm eating a lot, but I'm not overeating because it's a long summer, especially when you lose playing game, you, your season ends April 17th and you don't play again Mm. until around, you don't play again, like you don't play again until around like November. So 
I have a lot of time to gain a good amount of weight. And so right now I'm at 214. So I've gained around 10 ish pounds in the time and since the end of, since the end of the year. Damn. And skinny. You, stop was it. Skin, you was a skinny mini. You was a little skinny hey. mini. Ooh. And they still got a guard me. Boy, and they still got a guard a, me. Boy, I would have put a forearm in I would have put a forearm in your back. Bro, that's you sound the most old head shit old. I've ever seen. That's how old, Richard. Man, I, I would have whooped. I would have took I'd the cab to the light, game. I'd hit your <laughs> light ass with a forearm in your back, boy. Didn't I, Tayshia Prince dropped, give you little, buckets, Richard? I dropped that little shoulder in his chest. You know, you ever, you ever when that old head hit you one of these, you're like, oh, oh. Like, why didn't you take a charge? I was like, I was too hurt. I was too stunned. But, but now continue. Richard. I remember no. Tayshaun Prince, who was smaller than him, was giving you the work. When? The That's never happened. Biz. That's never, that's yes, never happened. Check that somebody. Tayshaun put, Prince some, was giving it, it, Richard Jeremiah, the we business. Have a, for Jeremiah, pull up the stats. 04, played them, hit 30 twice. We should go all, down three, all team skinny year dudes before, giving Richard the year business. before we swept them. Yeah, Trey, we argue about shit that happened we in three. I was about to say, we have, hour, yeah. we have an hour after like, Trey. We can dive into that conversation after. <laughs> Trump, three years Trey, old? We... You said three? <laughs> yeah, three. Where are you Damn. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Trey with the ultimate. <laughs> Trey's like, well, let me, hit you, let, me, let, me, let me hit you to some game, Trey. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Appreciate that, man. Thank you. But anyway, yeah, like I was saying, a, I, yeah, like I was, yeah, I put a forearm, I put a forearm in his back. Though. Can I go? Can That's I go, a foul, please? Richard? <laughs> yes, please, <laughs> please. Like I said, oh, that's right. <laughs> I'm trying to gain weight slowly. Let me speak. Wow, that's a shiny head, Rich. <laughs> I got the lights. I got the lights for that shining forehead. Make sure it glistens. You know, it's crazy. I thought about you, though, because I was on ESPN for the draft, and they were doing, like, the makeup stuff, and they put, like, a little powder, and they were saying, like, yeah, we don't want it to be shining. And I was like, so for somebody like Richard, you do, like, the whole head with powder? And they were like, you know what? Yeah. When he came in here, we used his, we did his whole head. No, that's a lie. That's a lie, because I don't – that's the thing. They always want to take away my shine. They want to put, like, stuff on me. Allie, Allie can Aww. attest because I've been in studio at Spectrum. I don't put anything. This is all natural. That glow, that natural did light. You, that did you hear see. what he just said, though? They don't want to take away my shine. They Richard, try to take away it's my called shine. television. <laughs> nah, they trying to take television. away my shine. Look. Hey, Road Trippers. Our next partner has a product we're personally using every day. We're all taking Athletic Greens because we want more energy, but our immune systems, and we all got tired of taking all the pills and vitamins. Want to see what the hype is all about? It's obvious. Every scoop of AG1, it tastes great, helps us to feel our best in the morning. And we have the peace of mind knowing that we're beginning every day with 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced superfoods, and even probiotics. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your own health. So to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash roadtrippin, take ownership over your health, and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. That's athleticgreens.com slash roadtrippin. Get started today. Calling all road trippers. We all love a good road trip on this podcast, right? Well, summer is here and big plans are being made. Make sure you're driving to your destination on a great set of tires from our friends at Discount Tire. Discount Tire is your one-stop shop for not only tires and tire maintenance, but also custom wheels and accessories like a new pair of windshield wiper blades. America has trusted Discount Tire for over 60 years and with over 1,100 locations across 38 states, they're sure to be one near you. Their industry-leading selection offers more than 70 brands of tires and more than 90 wheel brands. And right now you can visit their website, discounttire.com to locate a store, schedule an appointment, search for top brands, and even select and pay for your own tires. Head to discounttire.com today to register for email discounts and access the latest entire safety tips. You'll also find helpful information about the maintenance schedule of your specific make and model of vehicle. 
If you want to cut the line, how about this? We've got you covered, Road Trippers. Wait times, they're 30% shorter when you buy and book online at DiscountTire.com. So what are you waiting for? Head to your local Discount Tire or DiscountTire.com today, and let's get you taken care of. Hey, Road Trippers. Ever wonder if you're paying for a subscription you're not even using? I signed up for a free trial of a streaming service and forgot to opt out. And with Rocket Money's help, I was able to find the charges and cancel the subscription immediately. Rocket Money made it easy for me to sign up, and I love the custom notifications when there's a sudden change in spending or increased charges for monthly payments. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Did you know that most people think they spend $80 on monthly subscriptions, but in reality, these charges, they average around $200. Stop throwing your money away. Cancel those unwanted subscriptions. If rising prices are stressing you out and you're looking for ways to cut costs, you can now manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash road tripping. That's rocketmoney.com slash road tripping. One more time for Channing, rocketmoney.com slash road tripping. Calling all road trippers. We all know the problem with fads. They come and go. So when it comes to weight management plans, you need a long-term solution, and that's Noom. For some people, eating is an emotional experience. So when it comes to managing your weight, it makes sense that Noom has taken a psychology-based approach. This helps you to better build habits and behaviors that are easier to maintain. Using both science and personalization, Noom helps you manage your weight for the long term. And the best part is that you decide how Noom fits into your life, not the other way around. Based on a sample of almost 5,000 Noomers, 98% said Noom helped to change their habits and behaviors for good. Noom's personalized courses are easy to follow and will help grow your confidence with tools you can put into practice one day at a time. The bottom line is road trippers. Noom's changing how the world thinks about weight loss. So sign up for your free trial today at noom.com. Again, head to noom.com and sign up for your free trial today. The Road Tripping Crew, Rich Channing and myself, are really excited to announce our newest sponsor, Oakley. We've all worn Oakleys for years and love their different styles and commitment to quality. Oakleys are suited for everyday eyewear with frames and lenses, allowing for an extension of self, an expression of your personality. With Oakley, there's more than meets the eye. Here on Road Tripping, we live by the mantra, look good, feel good, play good. And that's why Oakley is the best partner for our show. It's the start of summer, which means you need to upgrade your sunglasses now. Check out oakley.com to get yourself a pair today. This summer, Oakley is offering Prism Lens Technology. Now, what's that? Well, it's a cutting edge proprietary technology from Oakley, and it's now available for everyday settings as well. Want to know more? Well, all you have to do is head over to oakley.com. When you wear Oakleys, there really is more than meets the eye. Don't take my word for it. Try it for yourself. We've worn a ton of different sunglass brands, and we can assure you Oakley is not only the best looking eyewear on the market, but also it's the highest quality. So calling all road trippers, head on over to oakley.com for more information and grab yourself a pair today. Hey, road trippers, Channing and I love our dogs and we want them to have the best food and nutrition available. That's why we feed our pups food from the farmer's dog. Whether you have a young puppy or a senior who's seen multiple decades, any dog person like me knows the most valuable thing in the world is spending time with your pet. The farmer's dog helps to keep them healthy, which can give you more quality years with them. The farmer's dog makes and delivers fresh, healthy dog food. It's recommended by vets, nutritionally balanced, and made from human-grade ingredients in safe, clean kitchens. It's the best option for dogs at all stages of life because it's not kibble, it's not canned goo, it's real food. The farmer's dog isn't just higher quality food. They also send and the food pre-portioned specifically for your dog based on their unique nutritional needs. It doesn't matter if your dog is young or old. It's always the right time to begin investing in their health, helping you both live more healthy, happy, and full years together. So get 50% off your first box of fresh, healthy food at thefarmersdog.com slash roadtrippin'. Plus, you'll get free shipping. Just go to thefarmersdog.com slash roadtrippin' to get 50% off your first box of food. That's thefarmersdog dot com slash road tripping. Okay, Trey, back to Trey. 214 wow. you're currently at. You want to gradually gain weight because I want to get it to the next level with this conversation. 214, where do you ultimately want to get to? And then I want to take it to the next one as well. When it comes to shooting 41%, like what's that ideal number for you in terms of a goal shooting for a season from three? And who are, so, who are the shooters you follow? Who do you who do you kind of like? Okay, so first I'll, I'll say I probably want to get to around like 220 bro, during training camp because during training camp you're going to lose weight mm. and then I'll get back to the you know weight that I probably want to play it. And the mix of strength and you know continuing to be athletic is very important. 
And when I went back to New Orleans last week, you know, I was doing my fourth place stuff and they were saying that I actually had the same, you know, athletic numbers that I did, but I'm 10 pounds heavier, which is always a good thing to, mm. you know, be, you know, athletic still, because there's a lot of guys that are really big and strong, but they can't move. And I'm not trying to be one of those guys. And to your point about shooting 41%, I, I'm just very, you know, I'm very particular about, you know, the shots that I take and also just being consistent with my shooting. And so shooting 41%, it's, it's not something I feel like is a tall task for me. I think shooting 41% on 10 attempts is what I'm really trying to get up to. I don't want to shoot 41 on five attempts. That's who are you like, Richard, who are you more scared of? The guy who shoots 38 on 12 attempts or the guy who shoots 45 on four attempts? Oh, well, I was a guy on four attempts. So, you know, me personally. <laughs> don't put yourself. Don't put no, yourself. I tell to no, no, I, no, I try and tell people like, like, no, because Steph can shoot 41% from three. Steph can shoot 41% or can shoot 39% from three. And people are like, oh, that's just okay. I'm like, man, that man is shooting 13, 14 attempts running around. 39% is like 50% for most players. Because like all shots exactly. are not created equal to your point. All percentages exactly. are not like Channing and I could both shoot 41% from three. Obviously, I'm a better shooter because I'm shorter and I don't have as much space. So it's like. But, well, that's not even I'm not even responding to that bullshit. You're responding yeah, by boy. not responding. You're responding by not responding. That's not true. Yeah, it's the dude who shoots 12 shots because that one game. You may go 11 for 12. I don't know how many threes Richard's ever made in his career. It's probably four because this is all-time high. But the real shooters are up there, 8, 9, 10, 11. What's, wait, Chandler, what's the, the most you made? I think I hit six. Uh, nine versus Kevin. Oh, that's cute, man. <laughs> With Dot and they whole team up. <laughs> that, that's, that's cute. Oh, that's, that's real so cute, good. man. Yeah, that's real What'd cute. What'd you do, man. 10? Yeah, I had time. That's a different era. We had positions back then. Like there were yeah. real power forwards back then. Yeah. You gotta put the ball in the back. Channing, you That's probably also did it. You Channing, you also probably did it on a winning team. We oh, won the game. Yeah, we <laughs> <laughs> Well, I hope so. You hit 10 Tell threes. Tell him Trey. If, if well, you I mean, lose the game, you're hitting hold 10 on. Threes. Was it against the Rockets? No, it was, it was not, not against, against the Rockets. The Clippers. And Kawhi oh, played, so oh, so which, which and, Clippers, and Kawhi which Clippers, which Clippers? It was post All Star break, Ka- led by Kawhi or Reggie Jackson. Which oh. one? Kawhi, Kawhi played. It was post All Star break, <laughs> so I don't want to hear it. They was they was locked in. I promise. Trey, Trey you hit ten threes. <laughs> yes, I did. You hit ten threes. You said, okay. How many yeah. did you end up with? How many did you end up thirty? I had thirty two. <laughs> 32. Okay, so what what was a better what was a better let me ask you this then what was a better um performance for you? The 41 against the Blazers on nine threes or the 10 against the Clippers on 32? Obviously the nine on 41, right? Yeah, nine, the 41. That was a fun game. That was a lot of fun. I can't lie. Man. When you feel Thank you. when you on Thank fire you. like that, boy, that basketball's great. It just imagine Literally. there are about two or three players that walk onto the court and are like that every night. Like, woo, you boys on fire, about to get up 15 threes. Yeah. yeah. See, back in my day, we used to have to fight for 30 <laughs> points. You know, it wasn't shoot 12 threes. It was, I'm going to go body to body with Dikembe and Alonzo and Shaquille O'Neal. I'm going to go in that paint. That's how we used to fight for our 30, not all these three point shots. You didn't have and... a three point line when you first got in the league, Richard. <laughs> It's not funny. It's not funny. <laughs> Trey, okay, wait, okay, actually, here we go. I got on, a question. Wait, I got a, I got a question. Yeah, go hold on, I got a question. On. So I've had this argument with people. Do you think the defense was better back then, or was the offense – is the offense just that much better now? Because you both. played in both eras, Richard. I mean, the, you played in both. No, the, off, the, the offense is better because – the offense is better. The offense is better because of the three-point shot. It's – I stand by that if Shaq were to show up today, if Yao Ming were to show up today, 
some of these three point shots would be gone because you have to carry more bigs. Like teams are getting more bigs just to guard Jokic, right? Teams are like, if we're going to play against that team with that player, we can't have one big. So in the late nineties, early two thousands and where bigs were still dominant, you couldn't carry all those guards because you needed someone. If you, you could, if you were going to play the Lakers and you were trying to win a championship, you weren't loading up with a ton of three point shooters because Shaq was seven foot, you know, 350 pounds. So, you know, I think now with the spacing and the lack of bigs, I think the offense is better. But defensively, it was a lot more ISO. You had to man all the way up. It was, Ooh. they would call it drop three, drop four. So if a guy got in foul oh. trouble. So if I got my second foul in the first quarter and the coach kept me in and I'm guarding Tracy McGrady, they're going drop three to Tracy McGrady five different times in a row. Five straight, and it was just like drop three. Everyone knows it's coming, so I got to either it hurt without fouling. I heard either let him go, or we got to switch, or they got to take me out the game. That's one thing that is lost strategy wise yeah. is trying to get guys in foul trouble. Oh, he's got two. Post his ass up. Either he gonna let you score, mm. or they gonna have to get his ass out the game. Now it's just like somebody's got two fouls. It's like well, first three point shot I got. First three point shot, and you don't ever attack a vulnerable player. So I think the defense was better because you had to man, you had to man up and it wasn't just firing of threes. The offense numbers goes up, but the defense was better because, you know, you couldn't be on the court if you couldn't defend. And when I came in, it was wings. It was Kobe, T-Mac, Vince, you know, those, those were the guys. Again, it was Steve Francis, Catino Mobley. Like you just go across Grant Hill, Ray Allen, uh, Latrell mm. Sprewell. Like you just go along that and then Bron and D Wade came in just a few years later. So it was just like a ton of wing players and you had to defend that wing position. Man, I think you look at like rotation. So if somebody's getting cooked one on one, like the two guard, like for us in Phoenix, it was Jason Richardson. He had the ultimate green light. So like we were like, hey Jay Rich gonna get 30 shots up. We don't give a shit. And then Amari would do his thing. If he didn't have a good post up, he was in screen and rolls. But if Amari was posting up and cooking, when they double teamed, it was like swing, swing. Then I had a big guy on me. So nowadays, if you play one big man and four wing guards, that rotation ain't shit to y'all, right? Because you're like, I'm used to guarding guards. Where like in our league, you had a gigantic dude and then a semi-gigantic dude. Like uh, my era was all power forwards. Like, Chris Bosh, Dirk, KG, Pau Gasol, Marc Gasol, LaMarcus Aldridge, Chris Kamen, like Tim Duncan, even St- Tim Duncan. Wow. Uh, yeah. uh, Great power forwards. Yeah. Like you would even go who I know I'm missing somebody that's going to suck. Uh, like Zach Randolph. Even like Zebo. So, oh, God. <laughs> Zach I was going to say Zebo, but I was like, like yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Zebo is pal. Yeah. Zebo was big. Dog, yeah. Man. Listen, was, you were in that ice tub after man. that. <laughs> Y'all were just in there tussling. It wasn't even wrestling. You got to get some Southern word, big tussling, motherfucker. <laughs> and people had duck-ins. Nobody ducks in anymore, right? They had like a fake screen and roll duck-in play that you knew was going to happen. And it, you were in a car accident every time he ran into you. Your body buckled like the you. But I think about being in a rotation like that. Y'all don't do that no more because as soon as somebody gets hot, you just double team. And the defenses go boom, boom, rotate, and now you have another really good defender. So, like, yeah. the ISO game is different. The plays are different. And, yes, there is going to be a guy that has an ultimate green light. But, like, even the lowest player – okay, let's say the least talented offensive player for Denver who just won probably is Aaron Gordon. Aaron Gordon still got up 15 shots. Like – back in the day there were dudes tony allen may get four and those are three steals <laughs> like Tra- he wasn't Tra- touching the rock I, like that. Tra- i'm not gonna ask you to, i'm not gonna ask you to like snitch because i have my own my own opinion so i'm kind of curious yours like you're a wing player and you're watching other um wing players in this league that are i i, I would say that are are the older a little bit older than you like so i would say jason tatum jalen brown for me personally the difference between what they do and what kobe or what? Um, what's another really good wing? I'll, I'll think of it in my head. But just guys that were attacking wings. I think these guys settle way too many for threes. 
They settle way too much for threes. And if you're living and dying by a shot that you're only going to make 40%, but you're six foot nine, you're athletic, you can swing, you can finish with both hands, you can dunk on people, you got float game, but you're going to shoot 12 threes. Yeah, you're going to have some 50 point games and you're going to have some games where your three point shot just ain't falling. But back when it was MJ, when it was Kobe, when it was D Wade, LeBron, these guys were guaranteed 10 free throws a night. And then they were going to make five, you know, they were going to make five at least field goals from in the paint, five field goals in the paint, Carmelo Anthony. And then Oof. they would shoot seven, eight threes, seven, eight threes. If they make three of them, they go on for 35. If they get hot, they make five, they go on for 40. But some of these guys are coming out like shooting 10, 12. And like, we're just going to volume the amount of threes. So when you're getting ready and you're working, is it, honing your three-point shot is it finding the balance or is it if i can be a dog in the paint people are going to give me space and then i'm going to get open shots like what's your approach watching the guys that do have success and guys that win championship because there's a difference a lot of guys are successful few guys win championships so first of all i look at my team in general we have three guys that are high volume you know ball dominant guys that can score the ball really high level. And so I understand a lot of my buckets are going to be off the ball anyway. So catch and shoot is my first domain that I have to live in because of my team makeup. But I look at a lot of Devin Booker as well, because he's like one of those guys that you talk about that lives a lot in that paint area. I'm not going to say that I am going to be hunting mid ranges, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to just not shoot that area anymore. Like I'm going to work on that as well. Right. Because now what I what I saw post All Star break is when I would pump fake and guys would fly by and I'm driving to the rim. They're meeting me outside the lane. They're like they're stepping up so far. They're not letting me get all the way to the rim. And that little sweet spot area in the mid range is very open. Like there's just nobody there because of defenses and the schemes. Now they're giving up those shots. So if I'm able to hit two or three of those shots a game. That's another six points, another eight points I had to my total. Mm -hmm. And it just makes me even more lethal. It's just harder to guard. Mm -hmm. Free throws. Count your free throws. Count your free throws. Yeah. Because that's a great sign of attack. Because when you get into the post, like people understand like postseason attack, like how are guys success? If you, it's very hard. And guys do it now because they're volume shooters. But getting to the free throw line, if you go eight for 10, and you four for 15, that means an off night is still 15, 16 points. Four for 15 mm -hmm. and eight for 10 for the free throw line still gets you 16. That's a terrible stat line. But the eight for 10 is what saves you. People forget that when you don't when you don't have that attack. But now if you get to the eight, eight to 10 and you actually hit your shots, now that that's when you're cooking. I just I, that's the one difference that I, I we joke a lot about different generations. I just think that I don't want to say settle. But it's like so much searching out. It's like you coveted a six foot eight wing that could attack the paint. Grant Hill, T Mac, Vince, you know, Kobe, LeBron, D Wade, Carmelo. Like these guys, they weren't shooting absurd amount of threes. But look at the list of guys. Their attack was key. And you have the physical capabilities to attack like that so yes you're a great shooter love adding the mid-range but like the reason why they stepping up is because they don't want to get dunked on right keep that yeah, shit yeah, keep, keep keep attacking that yeah, paint i want to get posted now no nope. I'll, I'll ask no. this is like uh stylistically and i know we were on nba twitter live but like just for these listeners what is the biggest difference from the regular season that you noticed playing to like farther in the playoffs stylistically in that, like when it comes to basketball one. Okay. I, I'll mention, I did play in the playoffs my rookie year. So do I get some credit for that? Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, you. not really. Not really. Uh, oh not my really. recency bias. That's like being We're talking about now. We're talking about now. It's like going to the dance right. with your sister. Like you went, but oh, like, wow. <laughs> Sometimes okay. they're the most meaningful Whoa. ones. Hey, Dick. Bridget, stop looking down like that. You, you <laughs> Allie, went to, Allie went with her brother. Oh, corn dog. Corn dog. There was only six people in Allie's town, so she was like, shit, come on, Corey, you gotta take me. She's or I not gotta from go with Alabama. the cow. Oh my oh, god. Allie wrote, a, Allie wrote a cow to the to the dance one time. And then just knocked it over like a parking spot. 
<laughs> Trey, continue. <laughs> you did play in the playoffs. God. Thank you, Adam. Thank you. Oh. Um, <laughs> man, y- y'all too. Um, <sighs> so the biggest difference is physicality. Uh, that's at the, like ultimately that's the biggest difference. People are way more physical. The refs are not calling anything. Tony Brothers is not calling anything. I it's let me tell amazing. you, Tony is one of the funniest people I've ever met. Let me just tell you that. But I'll I'll get to that later. But <laughs> it's very very different. And you know people aren't you know free throw merchants. I, I call it like people during the regular season they get bumped one time and just throw the ball to the rim. They're able to get a foul. They go into the free throw line. They're not calling those fouls in the playoffs. You know, the schemes are different. Guys, there are guys that are not playing. They play 35 minutes a game in the regular season. They're not playing in the playoffs because they just don't fit with the team. They just don't fit with the series. There's a lot of series that, you know, you just can't play. You can't play certain guys because the other team, they just have a scheme that's just better, you know, without that person on the court. So, it's so detail oriented, so strategic within these playoff games, and you know it's very fun. It's like a looks like chess out there. So, I have a couple yeah. more for you guys before we have to let Trey go. Um, and, and I want to start kind of with Trey, but obviously the two of you will certainly weigh in on this. Um, when it comes to the the priorities for your squad going into next season with the Pelicans, and look, we we start with Zion, and, and I say this from a respectful respectful space as well because. You have mentioned how great of a teammate he is to you, Trey, no matter what is going on right now on the outside. But when it comes to this squad next season, what are the priorities and how much does Zion need to be a part of it? I think I just saw uh, today he's only played at 114 of 308 games. Obviously, we know health is a big thing with him, um, but it certainly changes your team um, when he's out there. What, what kind of from your perspective are you watching, listening, paying attention to this summer? The biggest priority for our team is health. There's nothing else that you could really pinpoint it to because we weren't even fully healthy January 4th, and we were the number one team in the West. And so you can't look at our team and say, ah, oh, this team's broken. They need to fix this, that. Like, we didn't have a full team, and we were number one in the West. So something was working. And this is January 4th. This isn't like November where it's like beginning of the season. We're almost, you know, a good chunk of the way through the season. and you know, you you want to give it a chance. You never, I mean, we haven't seen the squad at full strength. And so once you give that team, you know, a chance at full strength, you don't know what could happen. And you saw a glimpse of it in December. That was one of the most fun, you know, months of basketball I ever had playing in my entire life. We were having fun out there. We were winning. We were just cooking people. Zion was playing at an MVP level. So when he's out there on the court, you see what he does. There is no discrediting what he does but obviously health is very important but did you give up on Joel Embiid on uh, year three when he didn't play that many games as well no so Richard give did. Zion. you know what Richard he does a lot you know I'm not even gonna say he did because I don't know if he did or not because I'm not gonna just go based on what Tanner did, did. did he did Richard, did you I, give I did I did I, I took a moment to think okay uh, I took a moment to think and I was like I didn't Th- that being said no player since the moment that Zion Williamson has come into the league has made more money per game. Think about that per game played actually on the court. Like if you were to pro rate yeah. his contract per how many games they give him for that 25 or 30 million, whatever it is. He went. It's probably, I was, I just, I want to every, like, this is the thing when we're, when people are critical, it almost comes as, as if you don't want him to succeed. No, we want him to succeed. Like it's the same with any player in our league, especially ones that have to be have the chance to be the face. And you know, I would say Trey, you're doing a good job being a good teammate for him. Continue to encourage him because he's going to need it. Um, you know that attention, that scrutiny that comes from being one of those faces. There's a lot of responsibility, and I think he's learning that. And there's some other ones that are learning that the hard way. It's like oh. Joe Blow can can make a mistake, but if that dude makes a mistake, it's gonna be it's gonna be turbulent all over the world. News forever, right? We, you and know, so on this side, we I think the thing is is like we have never and may never see anybody like him ever again, right? And if he couldn't shoot, or if he, you know, uh, 
didn't pass or made mistakes at the end of a game, we still are watching him. Like, he, we talk about some of the most polarizing players in the league. Zion, whether he plays 10 games, 20 games, 50 games, he's top five, which is crazy. So I think sometimes, you know, media members sound like haters. Some of them are. Some of them, you know, might be me sometimes. But I'm, also here. Just, I'm just <laughs> so curious. Oh, for sure. There's certain <laughs> things that I hate. And listen, this is not just a Zion thing. Richard knows this. When you come, when it comes to basketball, the one thing that I will not waver on, regardless of who you are, please come in shape. And the same thing I said about Jokic is the same thing I said about Embiid. Embiid gets in foul trouble. They're showing him before the game, watching Rick and Morty eating a gigantic hamburger 60 minutes before the game. And then all of a sudden now he gets in foul trouble and he's not living up to expectations. Our time in basketball is very, very short. So you saying, I'm going to eat healthy. I'm going to do this. I'm going to prepare. That's the minimum. That's like just the minimum. That's all we want you to do. Whether you can make shots or miss shots, that's part of the game. It's part of the entertainment. When you get down playing basketball and you got to write what you are, it, there's no like little thing on the click to say uh, NBA player. It is entertainer. We are entertainers and we play a sport. So for me, that is one thing that every NBA player needs to do. Just be in shape so we can see you. That's it. Simple. After that, then, hey, you make shots, you miss shots. We don't give a shit. We're going to talk about you anyways. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Absolutely. That's it. Anything to add there, Trey? No, Trey ain't got I mean, shit to say. Look. Right. <laughs> yeah. You, hold up. No, I, Richard's <laughs> not going to control this. Yeah. <laughs> so, you have to <laughs> look at you. this, too. You have to, please stop putting your head down like this. You're blinding us over here, Richard. <laughs> Ball head motherfucker. <laughs> all, all right, right. Anyway, I gotta go. Right. That's it. And with that, another episode of road tripping. No, no, no. Don't be don't be like that. No. Anyway, what I was going to say is people have to understand Zion is still a kid. Like he's younger than I am. Like he's been in the league for five years going on, but he's still a kid. So he's going to go through these lumps and He's going to have times where he needs to, you know, mature like any other kid or young man has to do. And he's, you also have to understand he's been in the limelight since he was 16 years old. Like it's hard to stay in that limelight for that long and, you know, try to not make mistakes. Obviously there's some mistakes that you can't make. There's some mistakes that you can definitely avoid, but you know, everybody's human at the end of the day. He's human. So you have to give him some grace. Totally. And guess what? If he comes back, shredded beef, plays 60, 70 games, all this, everyone's going to eat their words, literally. And and that's what's wild about it. It's like, yeah, it's like, okay, people said it. We're acknowledging what we see and what we may see based on what we have seen. And so now, you like that sentence? And so now we like look forward to, I want to see y'all ball out. I had y'all third in in the West last year. And everyone was like, Channing, man, you, you can't rely on this team. I was like, man, this is one of the best young teams. And we were right. And we were right. And we were right. <laughs> no, 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 no. I believe no, in no, y'all. No, bro. Thank I you. Believe we were, in and we were right. Thank you for joining Richard. us, Trey. <laughs> <laughs> this is <Andrew> Richard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can flick them off, man. Fuck that. Man. Yeah, you know, I'm still trying to Trey. keep a good, a good image here, man. <laughs> because oh. did you guys know and i'm sure you do know this because obviously channing he joined you on twitter live i asked him if he wanted to be in broadcasting one day and he does so any advice before we let trey go <laughs> honestly keep doing play this. as long Don't as do you can podcast. play as long as you can <laughs> that absolutely yeah, yes absolutely. that also and yeah. don't and, and honestly keep coming on these type of things and practice and your personality comes out that's why like when you leave when you left Twitter or you're obviously going to leave here, we're going to say, dude, he's great. He can come on anytime. You could say, if you had the time, instead of creating your own thing like everyone else, hop on a really good podcast, maybe like ours, and practice. And we'll interview people during the season. You yeah, don't start your own shit, Trey. Don't. It's too, it's too much. No, and not it's everybody. too early. It's too we, don't even like, we don't even like working with each other. We don't even like working with each don't. other anymore. <laughs> It Actually, that's real. a lie. I enjoy uh, working with them. And um, Trey, we are in Vegas. Uh, 
<laughs> we're in okay. Vegas next weekend. So if you are around, we're at the win. We'll be recording in the studios at the win. So stop on by, I'm, I'm, even if it's I'm just there, to say hello. So I'll I'd say what's up. Uh, yeah. All right. I'll bring a, hey, hey, Richard, I'll bring a hat for you as well. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> Drink some You're tea. amazing, Trey. We appreciate the time. <laughs> uh, one other question, too. Another edition. Sorry. Trey, ask the question Fuck again. Fuck you, Trey. <laughs> bitch. <laughs> no, give um, me bitch on TV now. Yeah, that's crazy, Richard. Come on, brother. <laughs> what, are we recording asking, again? I was just asking if you go by, you know, you knew what Richard. You, like, the nickname, you knew what you were the doing. Nickname for you Richard. knew what you were doing. I'm, don't don't play court. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're going to have no really trouble getting into our industry when you are done playing, my friend. No, none. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Well done. <laughs> I, got new, I got a new what Google phone. Oh, what is Lord. that? Oh, are you my God. Oh, you could, you could probably mount that and put it up and, you know, watch it, watch the games and stuff on that. <laughs> oh, my God. Goodbye. <laughs> There's no <laughs> way that thing even works. This episode of Road Trippin' has been brought to you by our friends at Discount Tire. Let's get you taken care of. Discount Tire is the largest independent tire retailer in the nation. With the biggest selection of tires and wheels, we know you'll find something you love for your vehicle. Log on to DiscountTire.com and use Treadwell, the world's only tool that gives you transparency on how tires really perform and personalized recommendations based on where and how you drive. Learn about the tire life and the tire cost to help you choose the right tires with Treadwell by Discount Tire. Here's a quick tip from the Discount Tire experts, and you can prevent tire wear and boost gas mileage by keeping the right air pressure in your tires. Tire air pressure supports the weight of your vehicle. It's important to check always for safety. Visit DiscountTire.com to learn more about tire safety, or if it's been over a month since you last checked your tire pressure, stop by one of their local stores for a free tire safety and pressure check. And remember, road trippers, you get 30% shorter average wait times when you buy and book online at discounttire.com.